good morning to all the participants and send our respects good morning to all the participants and our resource person dr m saravanan sir professor and head of the department of eze welcome sir thank you so good morning good morning thank you good morning sir sir, uh, sir dr m saravanan sir professor and head of the department of eze srinivasa institute of he completed phd in st peter's university in april 2015 me completed 2002 in anamala university be completed 2001 in adiyaman engineering college he has 18 years of teaching experience he has published 15 international journals he organized mhrd and uh, serb sponsored fdp programs uh, welcome sir i hand over the session to dr sarvanan sir thank you thank you madam please uh, allow me to share the ppt happy to uh, share my experience on neural network in one of the most interesting uh, area where i am worked uh, very long back uh, with uh, uh, collaboration of the groups and i do some projects with the neural network and uh, first of all i thank the management uh, and the organizing committee of this fdp uh, for selecting me as a resource person for presenting my experience with you all Hope uh, the new network concepts are uh, little uh, older one. We now we are uh, dealing with machine learning and we are dealing with artificial intelligence. But uh, the concept of new network in uh, it was introduced the uh, year year 1960s, okay. and a uh, lot of uh, algorithms developed and the main main focusly uh, on uh, control areas for automation they used. Uh, Neural network uh, along with the fuzzy logics uh, and uh, for uh, different control applications. So, and uh, due to that uh, lack of uh, availability of uh, uh, support system for implementation of this neural network, maybe sometimes in the in the period of 2019s, uh, it is get a little bit saturated. Very very few uh, count of research is happening in the neural network area uh, because of that. Unavailability of uh, different uh, uh, techniques, uh, support system. Like especially if you see that uh, uh, when we are doing a project on neural network uh, during my tech courses, uh, we used to uh, design algorithm, we implement the circuit, and we turn on the system and we wait for one or two days to get the result. There is a situation during 2000 uh, that period. then we want to do a project on uh, neural network or we want to do some uh, implementation work on neural network uh, that time the available resources can't help uh, to do it in a right way uh, there are uh, there are a few uh, uh, batches few of people few friends of mine also uh, while doing them that project they what they do is once they start a simulation they need to wait for two days to get the result there is a status of uh, Uh, neural network on that day, but now uh, due to the development of the different techniques, different uh, tools available, different uh, uh, speed of processing, and different data processing algorithms developed, especially telling uh, 
uh, most important thing about the neural work is uh, what we faced the problem in 1990s and all. Uh, we don't have a proper data handling uh, methodologies. Uh, we don't have a process uh, processors which can be able to handle that uh, huge amount of data with that much speed. So all those things only uh, somewhat delayed the uh, development of this neural network. But uh, recently we used to see that a uh, lot of uh, development along with uh, processor availability and the data handling capacity, different uh, uh, software simulation tools also now they started uh, introducing different instances for uh, handling data easily. I remember that when we when we are uh, uh, doing a project in a neural network uh, where if I want to upload a data or I want to take a data from a real-time processor, a sensor, sensor unit, if the data size is now at least a thousand samples I'm taking, uh, that itself is a tough job for us when I'm using a MATLAB or uh, some other software. Sir. So we don't have a proper uh, a default syntax available to handle the data, whatever recorded from the sensor unit. We separately develop a program, we write it and we need to get the data first of all, and then we need to process it. But now even MATLAB also have some different uh, instruction sets, uh, more uh, dedicatedly uh, uh, kept for uh, handling the neural network concepts. So that helps the uh, uh, unnecessary usage of uh, uh, time during the handling of data. So that is the situation of neural network on when we are studying and prison. So let me uh, let me get into the uh, topic. Uh, just this presentation, maybe it is uh, more more fundamental. What is exactly the neural network, and what do you mean by that uh, training process? What you are going to do with the training process? What exactly mean by the training process? How that the brain functioning? What is the biological neural network? How the artificial neural network differs from that? And what are the things we need to consider while doing the training? What are the things we need to consider for testing that algorithms? So all those things only we are going to discuss in this presentation. So uh, uh, it, it seems more, more, more fundamental about the neural networks. And uh, I hope that these concepts helps you to better understand about the uh, advanced concepts in machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. So. So everyone knows that the uh, neural network is just an information processing unit and it is inspired by uh, a biological neural network. So what is there inside our brain, how we are, how it is functioning, how the data are processed in our brain. Based on that, based on that uh, uh, we inspired from that and we develop this neural network. And it is absolutely information processing unit. Whatever the data we are providing, it, 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 it do some action over that and give some result. So uh, uh, mostly it is exact uh, uh, different futures from the input. Some part, part uh, some uh, uh, it performs some task over that on the learning process and uh, gives that uh, uh, as output and uh, without any explicit uh, rules. That is more important compared to the conventional method of neural network, uh, conventional method of data processing. And if you see the neural network processing, that is the a huge difference. In case of conventional method, we have a predefined mathematical equation. If a system is there, I need to take a data as an input and I need to give an output, then the system should hold some mathematical equation. It has some own defined functionality. And based on that function only, we are going to do that work. So for, for example, if I want to square, so whatever the input gives, I construct a circuit to do the squaring of that input. The output, I will get it as a squared version. No, no, I want, I'm going to, do some amplification. So I construct a circuit inside that to do the amplification of that input, whatever I am receiving, and it gives the amplified output. So uh, predefined what we need to do, what is the function we know before going to implement the system. And the base of that only the input, whatever we receive, will be get uh, uh, functionally uh, modified and sent to the output. So in a conventional approach, uh, what is there inside the system? We, we know about it and we whatever the business data is processed with that uh, knowing uh, functionality what we develop and it delivers the data. It may be the circuit or it may be some algorithms what we developed, but we know that this is what's going to be happening inside that system. But in case of neural network, it is not like that. What to be happened or what is the functionality we need to create that itself, the neural network itself develop. It's a self-develop or self-create the model for that during the learning process, 
same model, the whatever the functionality developed, that is used for testing purpose. So outside, if you see that we don't have a specific, uh, explicit rules available, uh, which we state that, okay, whenever you are receiving this input, you do that. Like that, we don't have any sort of uh, uh, a mathematical equation or a defined uh, functionality for the system. Okay. So that is what the uh, uh, difference between the conventional system and the neural network. Mr. Yes. Hello. So it's uh, it's it's processing speed is very very high, and uh, and another important thing is uh, it 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 functions in a parallel manner, okay. and that uh, how it happens that we discussed uh, once we started knowing about the neural system. So this is the basic structure of a biological neural network. Okay, so it's a, a simple uh, top diagram shows that it's a simple biological neuron. So which contains uh, uh, three important things: uh, dendrites and uh, axon and synapses. Synapses, synapses. Sometimes they they call it as a synaptic gap. So in in, in down diagram, if you see that, that it is very clearly mentioned. So soma is the neuron. So it's a cell body. So, which have different dendrites. Dendrites act as a input terminals. Okay, just imagine these are all the input terminals. Dendrites are all the input terminals, and so on is our cell body. And we are getting a signal from other neurons through axon. Axon is also in a terminal. Okay, and but this act, act as an output terminal. All dendrites are all act as an input terminals. Axons are act as an output terminal. So, if you take a one neuron. We have multiple dendrites, multiple input terminals, and one output terminal. So this uh, axon now it, it gives to the input. It will act as an input terminal to the different uh, other neurons. And uh, between the axon and dendrites, there will be a synaptic gap. So uh, there should be some chemical process taken, chemical activity taken place between these axon and dendrite in this gap, which modify the input whatever I received from the axon. To the dendrites. So the concept is that uh, we are receiving different signals from different neurons to dendrites, and dendrites accumulate the data and is given to the soma. So the soma has taken some action. Second action in the sense that there is only a binary action. It it get fired. It get fired means uh, it gives some electrical pulse to the axon. So uh, suppose if we take that we have. Uh, 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 here in this diagram, for example, we have uh, uh, six arms. Each arms contains uh, uh, three three inputs. Totally, we have eighteen inputs. So all the inputs it receives and accumulate all the inputs. If that accumulated value is greater than the threshold of the cell, so we have some predefined threshold value for the cell. Once these accumulated values are greater than the threshold value, this soma is get fired. Once this cell is get fired, it gives you a, a, a high impulse, electrical impulse to this axon. Now this axon is transmitted through this nerve system and reaches the synaptic gap. Again in the synaptic gap, uh, the data whatever we received in the axon is get modified by using a chemical process and it gives as an input to the next neuron. So here, if you see that we have another neurons oh, available in this side. Okay. So whatever the data we receive in the axon, just modified in the synaptic gap, and that will be given to the dendrites again. So here we have another uh, soma or another uh, cell body where it receives multiple dendrites, and again it has started accumulating all this input. Once if the threshold value received by accumulating all no the inputs, it gets no fired. So that is the way that the total data processing is taken place inside this neural system. Okay, so here the thing is that based on the uh, uh, new things it gains, the synaptic gap chemical processing is get updated. Okay, nothing will be changed. The number of data points would never change. The axon value won't change. Once it fires, it gets one level. I impulse, I input, I electrical pulse will transmit it through the axon. What updating in the brain system whenever we started learning? For example, we see that today as a, a newborn baby, we used to see some object. I see crow, uh, dog, I see. And then based on that uh, visualization, uh, the input taken from the eye sensory system and it gets it gives to the brain system where it is get updated the chemical process is now tuned to that 
and it started understanding that yes, this is a drug. We are registering that. Based on that, there should be some chemical. Once again, I am seeing that another object, another uh, uh, element, uh, maybe a, a, a cat. I am seeing by seeing the cat, I am I understood that there may be some other uh, change in this chemical process, which will adapt, uh, which can give the input to, to the these dendrites such that for uh, dog also there there should be a same process is taken for cat also the same process is taken so this this synaptic gap the chemical process what is taken in this synaptic gap and the com a composition of different chemicals available in this synaptic gap and the amount of magnification or a modification taken between the data in the axon and the data given to the dendrites that change is possible based on this synaptic gap and the, the updation of uh, Synaptic gaps only make you to remember different things. Okay, just uh, once you go to a conventional approach, you can a little more better you understand that what is exactly happening here. So, uh, in a conventional neural network, uh, artificial neural network, these axons are act as an output unit, dendrites are act as an input neurons, and synaptic gaps are act as an weight functions, and soma is act as an cell body. Okay, it's a neuron. So this is a, a computer simulated uh, structure of uh, uh, neurons. You see that this is this is the uh, simulated version of uh, your brain uh, biological neural network. Uh, so it's taken from the Wikipedia only. You can, you can see that. Uh, so uh, this is this is a cell body, and we have different axons uh -huh. and dendrites. So likewise, we have uh, uh, more than 100 billions of neurons available in our brain and which were, which are all interacted and interconnected. And uh, every time, whenever we started learning new things, that is the updation of these synaptic gap came. The composition of the chemical available between these axon and dendrite, this is get updated. So when I, when I say that I am storing It is not that uh, uh, we are storing something uh, physically in the memory, uh, physically in the brain. It is a, it is a, it is a process of updation of the chemical compost in this gap. So when I when you think that I am learning something new, don't imagine that it is stored somewhere. It is not stored. Some I am I am seeing that some persons I have in a computer science department. I know I saw and I uh, see Jagadish and sir and I remember him. Remember him in the sense it's not remembering as as it is the image of the Jagirisan sir. It is something about that already I have a faces, different faces. Father, there are some same chemical composition is there. Now when I started seeing and I first time I am seeing a Jagirisan sir and I understand his face structures and based on that the chemical uh, composition is get updated. So that uh, whatever the image I see based on this chemical composition I get that yes this is the person, this is the person I am going to visualize. So, just when you go to that uh, uh, artificial neural network, a little more better you can understand that. So the history of neural network, artificial neural network started in 1943. The globe is only first develop a neuron based on that uh, biological neural system and we develop a network based on by using the neurons and uh, it showcased that yes, it is possible to implement that artificial intelligence. and. Uh, that is the first uh, neural network we received from him. Then, 1949, the learning rule is developed. That is how to update that weights. Uh, as I said, that synaptic gap composition of chemicals. In case of uh, uh, artificial neural network, where we call that as a weighting functions, weight values, which modify the whatever input we received and gives you the uh, uh, accumulated uh, input to the uh, neurons. So that learning process or that we, what we call it as updation of weight, how to update the weight and the first learning rule is uh, developed by the HEB and it is called HEB learning rule uh, in 1949. Then 1950s, we uh, uh, perceptrons were developed uh, for larger set of uh, neurons. This HEB and meclopids have a very limited set of neurons, maybe five or six neurons we can use and we can develop. But when we go for the image composition, for pattern recognition and all, they started in 1950s only with the help of the perceptrons. And then Adelaide networks are developed in 1960s and 
most important uh, architecture developed and which is most widely adapted in different uh, control algorithms is the back propagation algorithms so that is most important uh, uh, algorithm uh, maybe in uh, for longer period of uh, control applications for automation industries they use that algorithm and it is most uh, uh, effectively uh, worked with the neural network and uh, in 1980s only it is introduced and uh, later on in 1990s uh, almost close to 1990s that uh, convolutional neural network were introduced okay this is something about the uh, basic fundamentals of uh, history of artificial neural network so let me see that what exactly that uh, happening in a neural network so whether you take it as a biological or in case of uh, artificial uh, the basic concept of uh, uh, a neural network uh, everyone everyone will believe that uh, data the data whatever we are uh, we are seeing we are absorbing we are learning is getting stored in the brain absolutely storage is not there in the brain so if uh, we need a storage then storage uh we need a little more uh, uh, higher size of brain maybe that uh, storing of data is not di directly a uh, physical storage what we are doing with the uh, computer uh, uh, storage uh, ram or rom how we store the data one by one uh, bit by bit it, it, that is not happening inside the brain first of all we must be clear about it so uh, in a brain the data is not exactly stored as it is we are following it in our conventional computing systems our uh, memory is what we are developed by using a uh, different digital circuits but what is happening how it is stored the data means so let me see one simple example so i have some input and output data for some inputs these are the outputs i uh, observed and i want to store it in my memory so whenever i say that uh, i am giving a one as input you must remember that i need to give a two as output so i need to give uh, when i give two as a input then you need to remember that i have uh, you need to give as a four as a output when i give a three as a input you need to give back six as a output when i give four as a input you need to give eight as a output so this is what that what typically in conventional systems happens the memory or the storage happening in the conventional system if you see that uh, when i give some input and uh, something happened uh, and you are getting some output maybe in terms of storage also as uh, in terms of name by seeing the face of a uh, uh, jagdish sir i remember that its name as tegris by seeing the face of nagraj sir and i remember that its name as nagraj so input is something what i am giving as a as a from the sensory data and output some in other format i am storing it or i am uh, delivering that some particular output so here thing is uh, whether we are taking that as input as it is and we are storing it and we are uh, Uh, from by some table as we are doing it in a table picture or some other conventional mathematical computing system so uh, by uh, feeding the uh, facial uh, uh, information about the jagdish sensor and uh, picking it from the table yes this facial corresponding to the name of jagdish and so he is like that or the facial of nagraj i feeding and i observe that yes this is it is it is not like that. as this example when i give one as input i need to give to us output so it is not necessary that i need to store one and its corresponding output to and i need to store two and its corresponding output four i need to store three and its corresponding output six i need to store four and its corresponding output eight not necessary that we need to store everything instead of that what we can do is i need to find what is that a common terms which will produce these outputs when i give this inputs if you are capable to identify that so we have to do one thing is the find the commonality between these data so when these are the inputs and these are the outputs i need what is the commonality between this what is the common factor which uh, produces this output when i give this input which may be common across all the type of inputs if i have four inputs uh, for all the four inputs that should be the common value so that whenever i give any data any input uh, i'll get the output now from this we can easily identify so i may have some common value of 2 so what i can do is uh, in in the in the case of uh, 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 input uh, when when i don't about i i i am material about to store the information about the input i am immaterial to store the value about the output also now what i need to remember remember in the sense it is it is act as an uh, uh, multiplying unit 
or the product R, or we say this is a, a chemical composition which do the modification in the input by using some uh, updation. So this is the two a value I'm remembering. In remembering is not also in the terms of uh, uh, just a value. It is uh, in terms of uh, a weighting function or in terms of uh, a chemical process. So this is what uh, the things happening. So uh, it is not necessary that we need to remember. Uh, we need to remember these four inputs and the four outputs. So instead of remembering all these four inputs and four outputs, what I can do is uh, I just remember this weight value. Remember also, it is not just like a, a, a storing these weight values somewhere. In in a, a exact biological system, what happened is, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, structure, so here the two will be there. The chemical composition, what it will do is, uh, this two is get uh, updated. This composition will do the uh, concept or the uh, product of this two with whatever the input it receives. So when axon delivers the one, this is multiplied with the two and I gave the two as an input to the dendrites. And whenever I receive four, then this four is multiplied with these two. So this synaptic gap is what updated. So that is what I'm telling. It's, it's the data is not stored exactly in the memory. It is a, it's a type of a, a weight composition, which we are commonly finding some value between the input and output. That value only get updated and that only act as an a weight. And that only we uh, uh, need to remember. And this value is only available in the uh, total network structure. So finding these weight values, what we call it as a training process. So when you take another example of the same set of data, so one, two, two, five, I'm getting three, eight point five, four, eleven, I'm getting. Now, in the previous case, we said just simply by some uh, uh, simple manipulation, we find. But this uh, in this area, it is it is tough to find something. What is the value? Uh, common value or the weighting value, we need to put it here such that uh, whenever I give this input, I am I'm getting this output. So that uh, identification of that value, a uh, common value, what we call is a weight value is what we call as a learning process. So in a neural network, whenever there is an input set is given and we have a predefined targets or if sometimes I am going for classification models, so a group of group of um, uh, images are considered as a A group, another uh, set of images are considered as a B group, or another set of images are considered as a, a C group, then these are the targets, a group name is the target for that. Whenever I am giving this set of part time images available here, so all the animals one group, all the uh, 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 computer related items are another group, the image related to the furniture are all another group. Uh, so if I am differentiating that, so the image informations are the inputs. The pixels, what I'm receiving from the images are all the inputs. So when I receive these inputs, uh, all the images, whatever I have, the furniture related images, chairs or table or uh, uh, any any sort of uh, furniture items, sofa set or dining table or uh, uh, T5, whatever it may be, the image related to the uh, furniture setup, all those images I am taking and I am giving training to the network that what I am training is the 
whenever uh, the information related to these any of these image i receive as input then i need to give as output as a c category a group c so you make that whatever whenever i receive the uh, sensory input uh, information uh, belongs to any of these image belongs to the furnitures then grouping to the c category so for that i need to find some commonality so this is the output is the c group and these are the different under dot token or in, uh, whatever maybe the number of images i am giving so i am giving all the images to the network and i am training that yes a common value i am finding training in the sense finding this common value so when you find this common value for the input and output then the training process is over the learning is completed once the network is learned after that whenever you give a, any image one among the thousand images what you used for training sometimes what happen is uh, we used to train for 10 and we may test it for 1000 sometimes if we have a common images uh, common all common images sometimes we can easily understand that is another way of uh, updation of data also so most of the time what we do is uh, when I, whenever i meet a person earlier i know his name whenever meet a person how come i know about his name that is the that is a, that is a, that is important thing about the neural network so if you are giving as much as possible information uh, to the neural network as much input data you are using for training that much better that network will function after that whatever the data related to that if you give uh, it's capable of identifying so training process is more important now these weight values are calculated is also very very important if the weight values are calculated more appropriately then we say that the training is uh, then 100% accurately and uh, we can use it for any other this is what the exact thing happening inside the neural network it's not that uh, data stored it is something we uh, are remember that there is a, a weight value we are updating the synaptic gap chemical composition is get updated every time whenever i am using uh, whenever i am giving some uh, different set of uh, input and uh, targets so once that get is updated properly then whenever i recall i use the same values and we can just like that we can retrieve it this is what that exact component uh, concept of neural network happening inside the biological as well as uh, when we are using a artificial neural network the same concept is used there this updation of this value for every time when i use a new set of input and output whatever the values available already that uh, uh, for three for first three i have some updated by later on i give this fourth input new value is getting uh, fitted in then this weight value is get updated further and you must remember that the updation of weight never change the composition of this input and the outputs same it should satisfy this value what we are identifying should satisfy all these four values not two or not three if it satisfy only two or three then it is not a efficient way of a weighting function very efficient way of learning process so that that is most important thing we need to understand this algorithms different algorithms developed only to identify that how to get this value for different set of uh, input and outputs how to get the optimal value of these weighting weighting functions for that only we use the different uh, algorithms okay. so this is a, a simple uh, metropix uh, neural network a single layered uh, a very basic fundamental artificial neural network uh, proposed by the metropolis in 1949 okay so if you see that uh, so this is the uh, input layer or we say that uh, input neurons a set of input neurons and this is the output neuron or output, sometimes we call it output layer so here we have only one single neuron so we say it's an output neuron if you have multiple outputs then we say it's an output layer okay so we have input layer and an output layer so there is only one weighting function or weighting layer available so it's called a single layer okay sometimes we may get confused that uh, number of layers is not based on the number of neural layers it's based on the weighting layers only so how many weighting functions we have weighting functional layers we have that many number of uh, layers only the neural network is uh, identified so this is a single layer because we have a single set of weighting functions w1 w2 w3 is what we call as a weighting function so based on these weighting function only the total setup of new network is functional so our ultimate aim is whenever you develop an architecture identifying this weighting function is what the initial uh, processing stage 
or we say the learning process or uh, training process of neural network. What exactly mean is uh, getting these values. What is W1, W2, W3, which is satisfies for different composition of X1, X2, X3 to get the different values of corresponding Y value. So this X1 is the defined inputs. Y is also the expected target value or output expected. And what you need to do the process is the very beginning process is the getting these new values for W1, W2 and W3 waiting values. So in the training process or we call it as a learning process, we are uh, develop algorithm to identify this value which is suitable for the different composition of uh, x1, x2, x3 with the uh, y values. So once we identify optimal values of weighting functions, w1, w2, w3, we can say that uh, it is a get trained, the training process is well. Then we go for testing. In testing process, the weighting value will be constant. We never change the weight values. Weight values are kept uh, ideal and constant during the testing process. So we just feed uh, uh, whatever the input we received uh, to the Am I audible? Audible, sir. Yes, yeah, thank you. Audible. Okay. So this is a, a, a single layer artificial neural network uh, proposed by the Michael Pearson. And you see that uh, the weighting function, the total output, how it is calculated is in a simple way that uh, the testing process or the updation of weight, updation as weight is what we call a training process. But the testing is very simple in case of a neural network. Just we, uh, uh, whatever uh, the input uh, is corresponding weight is multiplied and we are summing up all the inputs. That's what happened in the biological system. So the dendrites uh, receives the input, it's summing up all those inputs. If that summed value is greater than the threshold value, then the neuron will get fired. Here also same thing, when the summed value, so you see that x1, w1 plus x2, w2 plus x3, w3 is greater than or equal to the threshold value, then y goes to 1. That is what that we call a functional activation function. So activation, activation function of this output neuron is defined as 1. If that total y in, y in is what we call the sum of all the uh, product of input and the waiting function. Sum of product of uh, input and waiting function is what we call as a yin. So if this yin value is greater than the threshold, the y value goes to 1. Now this may be connected to the another neuron also. This value is given to the 
another neuron. Once these values get multiplied with the corresponding weighting function, and it gives a one among the input of that particular neurons. So if the cumulative uh, sum of inputs received for, by that neuron, if it is greater than the threshold, again that is get five. Likewise, it it keep going. Okay. So this is a simple system where uh, we can say that uh, whenever uh, so we have two states when uh, when y is zero or when is y is four. So when y is one means uh, it is get fired. The neuron is get fired. When y is zero, then we say so uh, neuron is not fired. So we are not received the sufficient amount of a uh, uh, sufficient sum of uh, the value which is greater than or equal to the threshold. So if the values uh, is lesser than the threshold, we say that the neuron won't get fired. So x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus x3 w3 is less than the threshold. Uh, then we'll get the output value is uh, zero. Okay. So this is the basic structure of a uh, meclopitz. Uh, with this, uh, I just show you the uh, simple example how that uh, uh, logical gates are implemented. What is the difficulty in that? From that, we can easily understand that what how exactly that artificial neural network is work. Then we take the uh, for detection by using an artificial neural network for an, uh, a biggest problem. Okay. So this is an, a simple uh, uh, system. You see that I think we, everyone knows about the under function. So under function means it's under gate. We are uh, we developed the under gate. Inside the under gate we have some transistor logic, TTL logic, or we say RTL logic, or we may use CMOS logic, whatever. So it's a circuit. Okay. So under functionality is okay, but when you want to implement that, I need to construct one circuit so that whenever I give this input combination of input, that produces that corresponding output. Otherwise, when you go for the algorithmic way in a digital system where we can store this table as a lookup table in a system where these are the inputs fitted up and I'm waiting this output. For these combination of inputs, I need these outputs. So same thing we can implement using this neural network. So here what we can do is that we have two, two set of inputs x1 x2 and i need this output so when i need to get this uh, output get fired means if both the input should be one if both the input is get one then only the output is get fired if any one of these input or both the inputs are zero then output should be in a, a zero level or not fired this may be the simple example but imagine the and you can interpret with the, a huge set of data so i may have a pixel uh, have, uh, uh, 1028 by 1028, 1024 by 1024 pixel I may have. Each pixel is given as a one neuron, one information, one input. So we may have nearly more than uh, 2 into 20 power, 2 power of 20 uh, set of uh, pixel values. That many number of neurons will be there. So based on the combinations, uh, if that images, these are the images, if I'm, these are the pixel values, this is the combination of these pixel values. If these pixel values are one and these are the pixel values, if I have zero, then I, I need that particular neuron is get activated. So that is the combination. That is the way we are extending this problem and we are doing the pattern recognition or image recognition. But the basic thing is, uh, so this is the combination of input. So for this combination of input, I am triggering these neurons. So this particular neuron is triggered only when both of these X1, X2 is get one. This may be, a, uh, we may imagine a thousand input combinations, but all these thousand data is given to one neuron only, which it's get activated, maybe one or zero. Sometimes we go with bipolar uh, activation also. When you go for bipolar uh, data, then we have minus one and one. Instead of zero and one, we have minus one and one. Minus one represents a non-firing mode and one represents a firing mode. Uh, sometimes bipolar mode will help to better uh, uh, yeah, in many situations where we have uh, multiple data, no more uh, complex data are there, different combinations are there, where bipolar set of information is uh, uh, much better and easy to implement. Okay, but in simple cases, we take it as a binary data. So imagine this is the set of data, this is the set of inputs for these combinations. Out of these uh, four set of values, uh, if this value comes, then only this neuron is get updated. It's get fired. Other uh, positions, other uh, values, it should not fire, get fired. So I need to train this neuron. So what I'm going to do is I'm giving some zero, zero. So it is defined that the threshold value is two. So whenever the total sum of input received by this output neuron is uh, equal to or greater than the two value, then this y goes to one level. 
if the total sum of input value is lesser than the 2 then the y is already in a zero level itself so i need to pick the value of w1 w2 such that whenever i am giving the any one of these any set of any pair of these input uh, but when i give this a uh, particular pair of input then only i i need to get the sum of input should be greater than or equal to 2 in all other combination this value should be lesser than 2 so such such values of w1 w2 i need to pick so how to do that means uh, in a, in a direct approach since we have only two input and one output i can do it in a, a direct way okay i i put different values of different combination of w1 w2 and i can do it but when you go for uh, uh, a little more complex data set i may have more than 15 or 10 20 uh, set of values and i have some multiple uh, output values and there are different combinations of uh, uh, inputs gives the different combinations of output then direct uh, calculation of this weight is not possible i need a, a separate procedure for doing this weight updations but it, since it's a basic thing uh, a basic logical functionality so i do it in a, a direct way that Whenever I give 0, 0, so I just find that, okay, a different combination of W and W2, so and I keep that W1 is 1, W2 is 4. So when I give 0, 0, what happens? X1 is 0, X2 is 0. So 0 into 1, I am getting 0. Here, 0 into 1, again, I am getting 0. So 0 plus 0, I am getting 0, which is less than the threshold 2. So output is 0. No problem. I am satisfied. When I give 0 and 1, 0 is multiplied with 1, I am getting 1, sorry, 0. 1 is multiplied with 1, I am getting 1. So 0 plus 1, 1 again I am getting, but the threshold is less than 2. So again, y is 0. So the target is again in the second case also. When I give 1 and 0, then what happens is uh, when I give 1, 1 into 1, I am getting 1 as a first data entering to the neuron, output neuron. And 0 into 1, 0 I am getting in the second data. So 1 plus 0, I am getting again 1, which is lesser than the threshold value. So it is again 0. When I give 1, 1 as an input, then what happens is, uh, when I give 1, 1 as an input, then what happens? 1 into 1, I am getting 1. Here also 1 into 1, I am getting 1. Two input data received at the output neuron, both are 1. 1 plus 1, I am getting 2, which is uh, equal to the threshold value. So output neuron is get fired, I am getting 1. So once, uh, instead of remembering, as I said, that instead of remembering this table, or instead of remembering the values inside this table, input and output, forget about this. Only possible is this four combination. Forget about this table. Now, we need to remember only these two weight values, 1 and 1. This is the network. So, give me the input combinations of x1, x2. I am capable to give the exact output what is available in this table. So, it is not necessary to remember all this value or store all these values in your network. You need to remember and store these two values only. That is what the training process. Finding these values, once you find out, uh, store it. Whatever the input we are getting, multiply it with this weight function, you will get a corresponding output without any disturbance. Now coming to the R gate, if you see that uh, for 0, 0 only, I should get a 0. For uh, 0, 1, uh, the 1, 0 or 1, 1, I need to get a output neuron get fired. So for that, uh, then weight function is selected as a 2. Okay. Based on threshold, if threshold is 3, then I need to select as a 3. Or, uh, uh, 2 and 1 also I can select. So for example, if, I, if the weight threshold value is changes, when I when I select a, a threshold value of 3, then I select this is a 2 and 1. Uh, 2 and uh, 3 and 1, 3 and 2 also not possible. Why? Right? Because this combination won't happen. So 2 and 2 is the absolute value for the uh, weight function for the threshold of 2. When threshold of 3, 3 and 3 can select. This for these algorithms, these are logical functions. Okay. This is the randomly I am picking the weight values, but this is not the right way. The weight, just for example, for understanding what is the role of weight function, I am explaining here. But identifying this weight function is not absolutely a random way or uh, in a trial basis. It is a, a proper algorithm should be followed to find this uh, uh, weight values. Later we discuss the uh, uh, basic algorithms that are available and what are the advanced algorithms we are available, available with. So, Again, when you, when you take a R gate with the weight values of 2 and 2, now what happened? X1 is 0, X2 is 0. So 0 into 2, I am getting 0. 0 into 2, I am getting 0. 0 plus 0, I am getting 0. Y is 0. So no, uh, it's less than threshold. So uh, output is not fired. When I go with 0 and 1, so this is a 0 into 2, I am getting 0. But here 1 into 2, I am getting 2. So 0 plus 2, I am getting a 2. That is equal to the threshold. Now the output is get fired. 
Now when I give uh, 1 and 0, this is 182, I am getting 2, this is 082, I am getting 0. So 2 plus 0, I am getting a sum of 2, which is equal to threshold. So output again 5. When I give 1 and 1, so 2 plus 2, I am getting as a sum total input. So 4 I will get, which is greater than threshold. So again, output is get 5. Now you see that uh, here also the same network, here also the same network. Only thing is the weight value is different. For this uh, and gate, this is the weight function ID. For implementation of our gate, this is the weight function ID. So no need to remember or no need to uh, hold this table or no need of any sort of uh, hardware implementation. Just if you have these uh, logical things and if you know that weight function, corresponding weight function, you can easily do it. But when coming to the XR function, now the question starts. Let's think about it. So when I give a 0, 0, I'm getting 0. When I give 0, 1, I need to get 1. When I give 1 and 0, I need to get 1. When I give 1 and 1, I need to get the same. This is the combination. So now we, if you want to uh, find a weight function for this, uh, it is tougher. It is not easy. You can't able to find the corresponding weight function, which is satisfies this combination. Again, only two inputs, uh, but one output, only four possible combination. But this combination is not possible in this method. Why? Because uh, you may try it. what may be the function if I, if I put one one what happened when I put one one uh, again the result is two only so when only for uh, this both is one then I will get okay let you put two two then these two conditions satisfied along with that fourth condition also gets satisfied when I put two two so it is tough to get it satisfied with these uh, single layer network for XR functionality. So we need go for, I am just telling that it is not possible because of, uh, because I am, I am not satisfied with the different combination in a manual way. Maybe when I use any algorithms, later on I show some algorithms which do that work and we identify these uh, weight functions. Okay. Why it is not possible to identify this function means that this is, this is a little complex uh, and a, a complex system, complex uh, functionality where uh, two possible uh, algorithms or two possible systems are doing. So two possible functionality involved in this. One is the AND function as well as the R function. Both are involved in this uh, uh, XR case. So we can't able to do it uh, directly finding the single layered value of uh, W1 and W2 to implement this XR functions. So we need to go for a uh, Multi layers. When you go for multi layer, so now you see that uh, this is a multi layer header. We have input layer, then we have a hidden layer, then we have a output layer. So, wherever we found that uh, the network is uh, little complex, the combinations are little complex. There is another reason also why we need to go for multi layer is the linear separability. So, here if you see that, uh, uh, later on I back to that functionality, but meanwhile you understand this. So if you see the un un function, if this is x1 and this is x2, for those combination, if I put that under function, so for 0, 0, I'll get a 0. For 0, 1, I'll get a 0. For 1, 0, I'll get a 0. For 1, 1, I'll get a 1. But when coming to the R functionality, 0, 0, I'll get a 0. 0, 1, I'll get a 1. 1, 0, I'll get a 1. For 1, 1 also, I'll get a 1. But when coming to the XR function, for 0, 0, it is a 0. For 1, 1 also it is 0. For uh, 1, 0 and 0, 1 it is 1. Now you see that uh, when I when I classify this data, set of group of data, uh, in case of under function, yes, it is possible. When I when I plot a, a linear separable line, this is what we call a linear separable line. So when I plot a linear separable line, one side of this is a negative value or we say it's a non-firing mode, another side is a firing mode. Here also you see that this side is a firing mode side, this side is a non-fire, uh, sorry, non-firing side and this side is a firing side. But when coming to the XR function, when I plot a linear separability line, where I should plot that? When I put it here, I can't be able to differentiate that uh, firing and non-firing mode. Because when I put a line here, one non-firing mode here, but that side you see that two of firing mode and one non-firing mode. So when I put a line here, that also not possible. So, okay, when I put a line in this side, no, not possible. When I put a line in this side, that also is not possible. So, nowhere we can put a, a separable line. We can't be able to separate this functionality. That is the reason. So,
so when it is possible to plot the linear separable line in a easier way it's easy to find the main functionality that's just like that but when you go for a functionality where linear separability is not that much easy then we need to go for multi layer network so single layer network is not possible so what we can do is that i can put two linear separable line that is what happens here and all one separable line is enough but here i put a two separable lines one here another one is here then what happen is the between these two inside these two linear separable line activation function will come that is a uh, firing mode will be then uh, outside the separable line non firing mode will be there okay that is the way you should differentiate so for separation of these functionality firing mode and non firing mode we need a two linear separable lines so within the range of linear separable lines firing modes values will come outside the line we have a non firing mode uh, non firing mode of possibility okay this is what that Uh, reason this also the other reason for why we need a multi layer network so when you go for multi layer network here you see that there is a two inputs x1 x2 and z1 z2 as a hidden layers and y act as an output layer so now we put a different weighting functions again this is randomly selected but i give you a, a exact procedure how to calculate this weighting function okay that is a, a standard procedure is there for selecting but now you see that uh, so a table also extend with the x1 x2 as a input and z1 z2 as a hidden layer output and y is the final output so what happen is when you when you see here this value this function x1 and not x2 is considered as z1 not of x1 and x2 is considered as z2 so this value x1 i am meaning so x1 and not of x2 so 1 and 0 sorry 0 and come complement of zero so one i get zero and one again i get zero now here zero and complement of one zero and zero i get a zero here zero sorry one and complement of zero one i get so one and one i get a one answer and coming here one and complement of one complement of one is zero so one and zero i get a zero here. so zero zero one zero will be the answer expected for z one so when you see that z one again the threshold is two Now what happened? I put zero zero. When I put zero zero, what happened? This weight value is this this zero is multiplied with zero. This zero is multiplied with minus one. I get a zero. So zero plus zero, which is less than threshold, so that one is zero. Okay. When I put zero at one, when I put zero at one, then what happened? Zero into two, uh, I get a zero, and uh, one into minus one, I get minus one. Zero plus minus one, I get a minus one. Again, less than threshold, so that one is zero. When I put a combination of one zero, now you put one zero. One is multiplied with the two, so I get a two. And when I put a zero here, zero is multiplied with minus one, I get zero. So two plus zero, I get a two. So that one reaches the value close to uh, equal to the threshold, so that one is get fired. That one is one. When I put one one here is the important thing. So when I put one one, what happened? This is a two, and this is a minus one. Two minus one, I get a one, which is less than threshold. So I get a z one not fire. Same combination for a z two. So based on that, uh, uh, what we are telling that is the z one z two combination we are getting. Then z one z two is R function. When we go for R function, as you know that R function we put two two. So same thing two two will be kept here. So z one is z two is get added up. So we get the final y. Okay, this is the way. we do the xor function why we need to go for xor function is that this is the reason linear separability with a single uh, line is not possible we go with the multi line of linear separability where so we need to adapt a multi layer input for the xor function so this is the uh, basic uh, uh, neural network structure so uh, input neuron x and output neuron we call so y and this is the weighting process when you go for multiple Input and multiple output. This is the way it is uh, combined. So each neuron in the inputs should have uh, the corresponding output neuron from connection, physical connection with the output neuron, and uh, each uh, connection have a weighting values. Even if the weight value is zero, also you should consider that as a weighting value. So each connection, each physical connection should have a weighting function. Okay, and this is a multi-layer network. So when you go for multi-layer network. Uh, So we have input layer and we have hidden layer and then we have an output layer. So there are two weighting functions. One between input layer and the hidden layer, one weighting function will come. 
from inner layer to outer layer uh, again another weighting function will come okay uh, this is an example just to uh, it shows that exactly what is that training process a learning process means okay it's a perceptron uh, neural network i take the perceptron neural network to explain the concept so this is the algorithm of that and this is the architecture okay so here in architecture if you see that it's a single layer network only with the additional uh, input what we call as a bias input okay so whenever uh, sometimes uh, we are uh, uh, not comfortable with the threshold when the threshold is not used we say that a uh, uh, biasing may be replaced with that for example i say that the uh, uh, threshold of 2 or threshold of 4 it means that the uh, uh, sum of all these things should have greater than uh, 4 okay so uh, while implementation or while writing uh, we need to do that activation function so when activation function uh, uh, when identifying the that in and to use the activation function to process uh, the final output value there are uh, uh, multiple varieties of activation function is there linear activation is there we have a binary activation function is there we have bipolar activation function is there so all these functionality is compatible with the zero threshold not with the, some non zero values of threshold so when threshold value is zero this activation function implementation is simple in algorithms so to make that threshold value as zero what we do is we add some binary bias value here so when the, when what happens is that this bias value is added up when bias value is along with the uh, available inputs uh, which will act as a, even if i want to four but these uh, this data is uh, i consider by instead of passing this i am considering this weighting function all these things are positive or all things are zero okay so instead of instead of having a threshold two greater than two greater than or equal to two and less than two that is one way of defining i felt that is little difficult instead of that i make that as a, a, a threshold as zero now now zero or positive value or negative value so when it is a negative value it is a not satisfied the threshold when we have zero or a positive value we say it's a threshold is satisfied that is the sum of these inputs x1 w1 x2 w2 plus x3 w3 the sum of these values are negative we say it is not satisfied the threshold when it is zero or positive we say it's a satisfied the threshold but i need uh, some threshold value what i can do is we put one bias value of four so one upon uh, when this is zero or plus it is greater than four total input if you see that along with the bias along with the bias if i take that uh, then it becomes a bias plus zero bias plus any positive value so what happens if uh, threshold is kept as a four right? now bias is kept as a four now what happened even i am getting this as a zero because of this existence of bias uh, zero plus four i get up so maybe uh, uh, overall if you see that overall input for the neuron the neuron is get activated only it crosses the four that is the rule but when when implementing the algorithm because of the existence of the bias that four i am receiving it from the bias and i make that uh, the weight values are going to be get updated only up to getting positive value so it's an algorithm convenience a mathematical convenience we make that the sum of these values should be greater than or equal to zero and these the physical threshold needed for the output neuron is satisfied by means of adding up one additional bias okay that is a small modification in the architecture compared to the previous what i explained so the step zero is the initialization of weight and bias bias is what we call that replacement for the threshold sometimes bias along with threshold also sometimes they will use for more uh, complex systems but in general bias is used to do this replace the threshold values so and we need to uh, select the learning rate also uh, for the perceptron the rate of uh, updation of weight okay the uh, learning means uh, please once again i am telling learning means uh, just uh, getting that value of weight value. this weight value wij vj this value only i need to get a new updated value which satisfy the all the combination of input and the outputs okay for that i a suitable value i need to get so now the weight values get updated what is the rate at which i need to update it i need to select that rate 
I may select the between zero to one. Any value between zero to one, I can select. Mostly they will select it as a 0.5. Okay, uh, uh, optimal rate. They, if it is close to zero, then it takes a huge amount of time to get update. When I select a one, uh, the time of updation will be very faster. Algorithm training process will be completed in a shorter time period. But the quality of weight what we receive may not satisfy with all the combination of inputs. So uh, optimally, they select the learning rate will be 0.5 or 0.6. Okay, uh, that is the thing we need to select. So this is the initial initialization of weight and bias. So initially, the weight functions are kept with zero. So always we start with the weight functions as zero. Then we start updating the weight for each and every combination of inputs, and we get it. Okay. Step one, while stopping condition is false, do step two to six. So two to six, I need to repeat uh, to unless the the stopping condition is uh, false. Stopping condition is false means the uh, if there won't be any change in the weight for all the combination of inputs, I keep on updating the weights. And I found that in a particular iteration, for all the combination, the same weight function is coming. There won't be any further change in the weight is happening. Then we can stop the updation of weight process. The and we conclude the training process is over. Then for each training pair of S to T, S is the set input values, T is the target value. For each pair, for example, if we take a XR gate or under gate, we have four possible combinations for two input. For three input, we may have some eight possible combinations. So that uh, as many number of pair, pair possible combination is there. For each combination, we need to do the step three to step five. This step three to step five, I need to repeat for each pair of combinations. Okay, then uh, step uh, step three, uh, set the activation function. That is the input activation function. We need to just whatever the input x I am receiving, I am uh, marking as a si. Okay, set values make as a xi. And uh, step four, compute the response of the output. As we know that y in, I am going to calculate. Not y directly calculated. Y is the activation function of uh, y in. So what is y in is? Y in is the sum of all this input what you receive. So y is y in is the bias plus sum of product of all the input and the weight functions. So x1 w1 plus x2 w2 etc. up to xa w8 etc. up to xn w8. So this is the all possible combination of uh, product of uh, xi and wi is the uh, y in value. So sum of bias plus product of all possible combination of uh, xi and wi is gives you the y in value. So based on the y in value, we apply the activation function. This is the bipolar activation function. So you see that uh, uh, in previous cases, I, 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 I uh, presented here, this is the binary activation function. When it is greater than or equal to threshold, put one. When it is uh, less than threshold, it is zero. But here it is a bipolar activation function. When it is greater than threshold, one. When it is less than threshold, minus one. When it is between, sorry, this is minus threshold. When it is between minus theta to plus theta, then we say it is a zero. So it is a uh, binary, uh, sorry, bipolar activation function. Here small change is there. You will make that it is minus theta. Okay. Then step five, updation of weight and bias if an error occurred. So we need to verify that whether the target and the uh, output, target in the sense that, uh, exactly what we need for this combination of x1, x2, x3, what is y expected and what is y I am getting from this uh, updated weight. Okay, this y is what we are calculating and from the table we have one y, that is what we call as a target. So if these two values are same, then no need to update the weight. If these two values are not equal, then we need to update the weight. Update the weight is uh, based on the formula of wi of mu, that is the new weight value. For each weight value, we need to do it. Update the weight and bias if an error occurred for all the values of the weight. So wi means all the values of weight, we need to do it. Okay. And uh, which is equal to wi volt plus learning rate into target into input. Okay. And this is this is the algorithm, this is the proposed methodology of updation of it based on the perceptron neuron. This is not a, a uniform formula for all the algorithms. Here, this algorithm, we are using this formula. This is what the important step in this algorithm. Perceptron follows this rule. If in back propagation, we have different rule of weight updation. When you go for CNN, we have a different rule of weight updation. 
So for different algorithms, we have different set of uh, rules for weight updation. For first of all, this is the rule for weight updation. So a bias mu is a bias old plus a alpha t. Alpha is the learning rate. Okay, and t is the target was bias. If uh, y and t both are same, then no need of any updation. Whatever the old weight function is available, as it is, we can use as a new one. What is the old bias is there? As it is, we can use it for the new one. Then test for stopping condition. Test for stopping condition is a uh, Whether any change in the weight or not, for each combination of a, uh, each pair of input, we need to verify. So any updation is there, we need to continue the updation process. If there won't be any change in the weight function, then we can stop. Else we need to continue. Okay, this is the a yeah, procedure or algorithm for uh, for such kind of thing. So a small set of data for uh, this is what the Uh, under gate function actually it's under gate function uh, x1 x2 and the target you see one one output is one actually this is the binary input bipolar output we are using for this under function so one one output is one one zero output is minus one one zero one output is minus one zero zero output is minus one so this is the target from the table we took and this is the output what we received from these combinations okay. so we need to verify these two only when we say that sorry this out to out and this only one when we say these two are same then we say that uh, we are uh, get satisfied okay so x1 x2 and l value we are taking and net is the y in what we receive since uh, initial weights are zero all this l actually sorry l is a, a bias input value okay so whatever this bias For that, it is a one always, always bias value because bias acts as a threshold. So the input applied to the bias B also as one of the weight function. So for the input, what is applied to the terminal of that input terminal of the bias path is made always one. Okay, so this is that bias neuron input neuron. So these these three should be multiplied with the old weight values. Weight value initially zero zero zero. W one zero, W two zero, B also zero. So when I multiply this, So you see that the net value is what we call it as a y y in. Okay. So since initial weight values are zero, all these values are multiplied with that corresponding weight function zero zero zero. We are getting net value as zero. When net value is zero, then based on the activation function, if net value is uh, uh, less than the threshold, we are getting a zero. So this is zero. And uh, target. Uh, This is the value we are receiving from the table. So if you see that target value is always one minus one minus one minus one bipolar targets. Now we need to find out whether we need to change the weight or not. So when target and uh, output is same or not. So output I am getting zero, but target I am getting one. So both are not same. So I need to change the update the weight. So what is the updation of weight formula? We need to go with the We need to go with the old weight plus alpha t x i. So alpha t x i means for w one alpha let me take one and the t is the uh, target one and x i is one. So one into one into one. So we are getting new weight value as one. Similarly for w two we need to calculate. Similarly we need to calculate for a del b. So this is the change in weight. So this change in weight should be added with the old weight zero zero zero. So we'll get a one one one. Okay, so one plus zero, one plus zero, one plus zero. So you get a one, one, one. This is the new weight value. Now I take the second set of pair of inputs, one zero and one. So.
So what is the net value I am getting? So now the new weight values are one, one, one. Now x1 is multiplied with the w1, so I'll get one. X2 is multiplied with the w2. X2 is zero. Zero is multiplied with this one, so I will get a zero. Then this one is multiplied with the bias one, so I'll get one. So one plus one, I'll get a two. So net weight is two, which is greater than the threshold. The output is one. But what is the target? Target is minus one. So output and target is not same. Again, I need to update the weight. So how do I update the weight? Now you take that uh, whatever the weight value plus x i into target into alpha minus one into one into one. So I get a minus one as a new up weight updation. So minus one. Now this is added with the previous one. So I get a new value of weight is a zero. Okay, that is what that is the way that you are going to update the weight. So similarly w two. When I take a w two, what is that uh, target? Target is the Minus one, x two is a zero, zero into minus one into one, so I'll get a zero. So zero plus one, I'll get the one as it is. Similarly, bias is get updated. Okay, so when go for bias, only the alpha and the xi I will multiply. So xi xi is one, one is multiplied with the one. So we are we are getting sorry target into alpha minus t into minus t into alpha minus t into one now minus one into one, I'll get a minus. Now I add up with this. So what happened? Minus one plus one zero, zero plus one one, minus one plus one zero. The, this is a new weight based on the second pair. Similarly, third pair, fourth pair. So this is one for one iteration. Likewise, you need to continue second iteration. This is the change in weight. So you continue update the weight till you satisfy the stopping condition. So what is the stopping condition? You see that at the tenth epoch, tenth iteration, I am getting the Satisfied with the stopping condition. So, what is the stopping condition? If you see that uh, the weight updation is becomes totally zero, there won't be any change required in the weight updation. So, the del W one, you see, for all the combination of uh, weight, we get zero. For all the combination of W two, I'm getting zero. For all combination of B, I'm getting zero. Okay. Here also, you see that uh, this weight updation is becomes zero. No change in the weight required, but only for this pair, not for the all the pair of input. So. Condition is for all the pair of input. If you are getting the change in weight is zero, then we can stop updating further. So this is the final weight value: two, two, two. Sorry, two, three minus two. This is the final weighting function. W one is two, W two is three, uh, and B value is minus two. So just you put it here uh, in in gate of a uh, and function. Uh, take uh, two uh, neurons x one, x two neurons one bias neuron. Bias input is one always. That term is minus four always. So uh, x one weight value is two, x two weight value is three. <coughs> so now for one one only, you will get a sum of five minus four one, greater than zero. Output is goes to one. For all other combination, it may be two minus four or three minus four. So I will get a minus two or minus four. So which is lesser than the threshold. So always y value is a zero only, and only except a one one combination. So this is the this is the standardized procedure of it. Even though we have uh, in metrics, we directly put the weight value based on our experience. Uh, but uh, the standard procedure of weight updation or the training process is based on these algorithms only. This is the a simple uh, uh, standardized algorithm called the Perceptron. There may be some advanced algorithms also. We have Adamian algorithms. We have back propagation algorithms. Okay. So this is about that uh, 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 process of learning, or we say it's a training the network. So how that weight is get updated for a different uh, combination of things. This is just don't think that it's just for an logic gates. Same thing applicable for even uh, uh, any image updation also, image classification also. Only thing is we may have a different set of inputs. X one, X two may have we may have some thousand uh, twenty four input sets. We may have some. Uh, 500 target points. So different possible combination of pixel rates, different category. I have. So for 10 category, as I am doing, then 10 per target will be 10 neurons. 10 output neurons will be there in the target. So based on the number of classification you are going to do, number of groups you are going to make, that many number of targets you may have. Or if you are going to go for uh, uh, identification of uh, pattern recognition or face recognition, then Based on that, uh, if uh, 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 pattern recognition where I am going to use alphabets, then that all alphabets will be the targets. So we have 26 uh, targets will be there. 
So based on the different shape of your handwriting, so when I put A in a different styles, that pixel rates I am taking and I am training and I am updating that grouping to the one particular target. So that is the way. It's the same concept only. But thing is, uh, uh, the algorithm may be a little more uh, uh, advanced algorithm. May this algorithm may not suitable to all the uh, complex problems. We need a little more uh, a complex procedure for updation of plates. Or uh, we need a, a, a complex architecture where we may have multiple layers, the multiple waiting functions, updations are needed. Apart from that, the procedure of learning process of neural network is the same. Okay, so this is a, a, another uh, uh, important neural network, what we call the back propagation network. Most uh, widely adapted uh, uh, neural network in uh, uh, control applications, where uh, many of the automation system, automation industries are fabricated along with this. Uh, uh, when, when they are using a neural network for the uh, uh, control applications, that definitely the back propagation network is adapted. So that much powerful uh, algorithm. So based on the error between the output and the target, we update the thing. That is the difference. Here and all, if you just observe that whether output and targets are equal or not. If it is not equal, we update. But how we are updating is not based on the any other uh, difference of amount of error between the output and target. It simply update the weights. Okay, but it won't it won't observe how much that error is, how much that uh, target is uh, uh, away from exact output. So, but in case of back propagation, that is most important thing that uh, the target and the errors are considered, and the difference between the target and error is observed, and based on that error only the weights are get updated. So that it is uh, more faster than the other basic neural networks available. Uh, like Perceptron or Adaline networks or uh, some more networks are there. All those things, compared to all those neural networks, back propagation network is much, much, much faster. And uh, the reason is only that based on the error between the target and the uh, exact uh, output what we receive by the existing weight values, we are updating them. Okay. So uh, that should be a, a feedback. The error functionality is calculated and is fitted back to the on about the input and the, the based on that only we are getting updated. In the this is the uh, standard architecture of a uh, back propagation algorithm. This is also a, a three layer network, a two layer, well, a two layer network. So, as I said, that only weight layers are computed. We have input layer, hidden layer, and output layers. Okay, so, this is the input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. And this is the uh, Full chart of the back uh, propagation algorithm. We initialize the uh, training process, initialize the weight and bias as I said. Randomly, we can select any value, but most of the times we select with the zero zero zero. Okay, yes, we have experience already, and with the same network is adapted. Sometimes I need to uh, reconstruct the designing it with some few parameters, and already you know the weight functions which are uh, used in similar uh, uh, set of arrangements. Uh, same weight function also we can put it as the initial. So based on that the initialized uh, initial weight values and bias values, uh, yes, there is a chance of uh, uh, the speed of uh, uh, training process, updation of weight may happen. Okay, apart from that, there won't be any much difference. Okay. And, uh, present the input pattern and the calculate output values. Calculate the MS mean square error. Based on the mean square error, we define the value, and the, if it is lesser than the mean square error, uh, we stop the training. Otherwise, if the mean square error is greater than the threshold mean square error, then we continue the process of updation. We go for the next year to update the data and go for uh, uh, again, take the input output uh, and calculate the uh, target and the output value difference. Mean square error value again calculated, again verified. If it is lesser than the threshold, again go for another iteration. So this iteration continue till the mean square error, what we calculated by the difference between the output and target, is lesser than the uh, defined value of mean square error, then we stop the process of calculation. This is the algorithm. Okay, so, so initialize the weight as I said, very uh, 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 beginning step step zero. Step one, uh, stop. While continuing stop condition, while uh, stopping condition is possible, do step two to nine. 
as you will see, these are all the same as the percent ones. We can uh, inputs are uh, set with uh, different values. And for each header layer, we need to find the activation function. So set same thing. So it's not uh, something new we are going to adapt. Even though we have multiple layers, we have multiple number of waiting functions and input and hidden layers. So when I compare to Z1, okay, when I compare, when I considering Z1, so these are all the inputs. I sum all these inputs with the corresponding waiting functions and I verify that what is that, whether it is uh, uh, satisfied with the activation function or not. So again, this is the how I put Y in as a sum of input received for that particular output neuron. This is the Z in J, which is the uh, first hidden neuron available at the sum of the input received for the first hidden neuron. So which is uh, the V, V, V zero J is the weight function of the bias value. Okay. Plus sum of product of all the input and weight function corresponding to the uh, hidden layer and the input layer. X I V I G. So this is the VAG. <coughs> so V V not one, V one two, V one one, V I one, like that it goes. So this is the data received at for Z one. When when coming to Z Z Z J, it is V not J, V one J, V two J, V three J, like that V I J will be. For Z P, we get V not P, V one P, V two P, like that. These are the waiting function, and we have bias also. Okay, maybe in structure. Sorry, this is the bias value one. They put so this is the this this is the bias terminals for each neurons, and this is the input neurons x1 to xn. Okay, so v are, v not j is the uh, bias value plus the product of sum of the input and the weight values between the input and the hidden neurons. <coughs> Once you get that uh, sum value, then apply the activation function. So the activation function it is based on that uh, user selection. I mean, select the binary activation or bipolar activation or linear activation, identical activation. So whenever there is a possible value, put one. That also is a simple rule we can use for activation function. So activation function is a user defined function. Okay, once based on the activation function, Z Z is get fired or not fired is the same. Okay, then we go for updation of a weight between the hidden layer and the Output layer. So this is a Z in K that gives you the sum of uh, all the input received at the first output neuron. Then that is the uh, bias of uh, output neuron, bias between output and hidden neuron plus sum of product of uh, uh, hidden neuron multiply with the weight function between hidden and the output. Neuron. Once you get that value of Y in K, then uh, apply the activation function of Y in K, then you get the output. Okay. So this is a this is the two things we are doing that uh, finding the output for the available weight. It's not that weight is get updated till now. Whatever the weight available for that, we calculate what is the uh, value of uh, hidden layer neuron and what is the output neuron status. Once uh, based on that, uh, now we calculate what is the difference between the output value and the target value. So what I calculated the output is that K in the previous step. And what is the target I have? That is the uh, exactly from the table. What what is available for those combination? I take. What is the difference between that? That is multiplied with the uh, activation function of that Y and K, and we calculate the change in weight value. So change in weight value only here we are calculating. This is alpha, del K. Del K is that uh, the error value and Z Z. Z Z is the uh, uh, status of a <coughs> hidden neuron. So once we get the change in weight value, that we are going to update it. Similarly, we will get the uh, updation of weight in the uh, input and hidden neuron also. So this is the updation of weight between hidden and output neuron. Then this is the uh, change updation of weight in between the input and the hidden neuron. Once we these two steps six and seven will do the updation of weight in the both the layers. Then once the updation of weight is over, then we go for a uh, new weight calculation between the output and hidden layer and uh, between the input and output layer. Or input and hidden layer. So once your uh, updation is weight is over, then we go for the step three. Again, we calculate the uh, new status of hidden layer, new status of output layer, check the difference, find the error, update the weight. Again, new values or weights are updated. Then go for testing the starting line. If uh, Updation of weight is not there. No, it's a variation. Updation is zero. No further change in the weight value. Then we start more from the low. Okay. 
So this is an algorithm of a back propagation. So one of the most powerful algorithm used in a control application system. When we uh, uh, go for automation system, the, uh, there we use this uh, back propagation algorithm. Okay, so just I gave you one simple example uh, uh, to understand better what is that exactly the neural network is doing. So this is the multi-level inverter. Okay, so uh, we have the, the armature voltage here. We are receiving between VA and the N. Okay, so this value VA is depends on the different switching action of uh, this uh, SIRs. Okay, so it may be SA or SB. SA plus or SA minus, SB plus or SB minus. So based on these switching action only, we are getting the armature voltage. Sometimes what happens is that, uh, the problem in this uh, H bridge is that if any one of these uh, uh, switching terminal is get failed, failed to switch, suppose if SB plus, this particular component is get damaged, okay. Even if it is get damaged, I will get a VA value. That's a problem. The VA value I will get, but this VA value is a combination of different switching action. So uh, because of SA plus, SA minus, SB minus, we are getting some value, but that is not sufficient to run the armature. Okay. So if physically you verify that there will be voltage available in these terminals, but to the devolved means to the devolved available in this terminal. But the problem is uh, the amount of voltage uh, or the power required to pull up the armature is not sufficient. That leads to damaging the armature. So physically, when I verify using a multimeter, what is the voltage across this VA and N? Whether all the switching terminals are under active mode or any one of the switching terminals in a inactive mode, we are getting some voltage. So when I physically verify, I can't identify that whether there is a fault happening happened or not. Even though there is a fault, any one of these switches not properly turning on, on in its synchronized way, then also I'll get the voltage, but that is not the exact voltage what we require. That is not the exact power delivered by this network to the corresponding armature. So we need to identify that even though there is a voltage available, but due to this fault, there is a difference in the shape of the signal. When I plot, when I put it in the CRO, I can observe there is a difference in the shape, but I can't uh, just like that. I can identify the voltage difference. That is a problem. The user who verifies the voltage alone is not able to identify the difference. But uh, when you go for a detailed analysis of the signal, we can identify yes, particularly this particular switch is not functioning properly. But thing is, uh, it is not easily identified by a user who is going to be the uh, 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 basic uh, supervisor or uh, uh, basic uh, uh, skilled assistant who is going to verify the voltage available. Maybe the voltage I have seen to 30 and it is given to the armature, it is functioning, it is it's working okay. But after a few hours of working, after a few days of working, the armature may get damaged because of the fault in the any one of these switching actions. So the situation, the status, you understand that physically or mathematically, when I use some instrument to identify it, we can't do it. Why? Because that shows that to the devolve is available. But when you go for a deeper analysis, then only we can identify yes, there is a fault. That, that is possible only after identification of, after undergoing the damage of my armature, I come to know that yes, there is a, a fault in the H bridge. So some one of some of these uh, switching action is not proper. When I identify means uh, when I come to know that the complete armature is get damaged. Before that, I can't able to identify the fault. Why? Because uh, the voltage what I am measuring in the VA terminal is shows that even any one of the switches not functioning properly also. It shows the exact value as it is. That's the problem. So unless otherwise I intentionally put what CRO keep on monitoring the signal, I can't do the analysis. I can't do the uh, identification of this part. So here, what I what is needed is there some something like a human need to be present everywhere, every time over there to know that and to see that yes, whether that signal shape is. Uh, uh, same or not, whether I am getting that value exactly. Every time it is analyzing the total signal and plotting it uh, and we seeing the shape of the signal and the changes happening in the signal is, uh, uh, it's physically tough. For reality, it is very, very tough. So we need a system to do that work, which is uh, undefined, mathematically undefinable. 
I can't mathematically define uh, this is the fault because mathematically it satisfies the voltage I'm meeting. Yes, I'm meeting to 30 volts, but the fault is there still. But that fault we can't mathematically describe. Then we need this type of a neural network purpose where the human only can identify and yeah, by experience or by comparing multiple things only we come to know yes this is the fault happening in the system which is mathematically undescribable then definitely we need a neural network support okay so this is the this is the problem so thing is that i will get the voltage as it is to 30 volt even if that is a all switching elements are functioning properly or any one or any two switching element is get failed also i will get the 230 volt as it is that that doesn't help me to identify the exact fault only thing is that by monitoring the shape of the signal in the va terminal i come to know whether there is a fault happened or not so for that i need to employ one person stand every time uh, every uh, do uh, every time throw the process and i need to monitor uh, completely what is happening in the signal shape that is very very tough to implement so what we are doing is now I am going to uh, put a neural network system where I am going to verify that uh, I am going to train my network first of all. My training is uh, based on first when there won't be any fault. What is the shape of the signal I am getting? I am going to give the, that particular signal and I am going to train that as normal condition. When the SCA plus is get failed, what is the shape of the signal I am getting? That signal I am going to feed and I am going to verify whether that uh, uh, and I, I'm going to train my network that this signal belongs to the uh, fault one. And when I when I when I make that purposefully that A S A minus is get faulted and S A plus B plus and B minus is get functioning properly. What is the type of signal getting? That signal I'm giving as a third input to the network. Train the network that is a fault two. So for each and every fault, I'm getting different signals. That signal I'm giving and I'm training my network. These signals belong to this fault. It's like a pattern classification only. Whenever I am giving, getting this particular shape of pattern, this belongs to this part. Okay, that is what I am going to do. So this is the architecture, uh, uh, block diagram of this storage system. So I am taking the signal. Future is going to be extracted. Here the thing is the uh, most important thing about the neural network is the, whether I am giving the signal as it is to classify it or any of the particular future I am taking from that signals because five signals are there. One is a normal condition signal. One is a SA fault, SA minus fault, SA plus fault, SB plus plus, SB minus fault. So four fault is signal, one normal signal. Five different signals are there. Now five different signals, I'm going to categorize into five different ways. So whenever that particular signal happens, I'm categorizing that that particular fault is happened and I'm indicating to the user that that particular switching element is the fault. So that is possible once if I give the signal to the I input to the neural network. One thing is, as it is, give the signal, uh, total signal as it is the input to the neural network. Otherwise, uh, if I found there is a parameter will change for each signal. One particular parameter differ for all these four categories, all these five categories. That particular parameter alone I can extract and I can give. This is what we call a future extraction. Which particular future of that particular signal used for differentiating that five signals. Okay, that is what the future extraction. So output we are taking it from the H bridge and we are getting the future extraction. Then the network is trained. Once I diagnose the system, switching pattern, calculation of the gate signal output is given, then we correct it and we go for uh, implementing in the material. <coughs> Maybe it is tough to understand, but just uh, I am just giving you only the example. So don't uh, in detail see what is this. Okay, this is the First one is the normal signal. Second one is the fault A plus. That is the, this is the output signal VA when uh, switching element SA plus is get faulted, which may be short uh, open circuited or get damaged. During that period, this is the type of signal I'm getting. And uh, fault A minus, that is the when switch A minus is get faulted, this is the type of signal I'm getting. So, B, SB minus is getting, SB plus is getting faulted. This is the type of signal I'm getting. SB minus is getting faulted. This is the type of signal I'm getting. So we have five different types of signals. These signals, if you see in terms of voltage, all these five signals give you the 230 volt. As a voltage measurement of, from the VA, there won't be any problem. Please understand that 
imagine that why, when, when there is a difference in signal, we'll get a different voltage. But that is not the problem here. The problem is even though this, any one of these switching element is failed, eh, still armature continues to run. The system is continues to run without knowing that, without indicating the any uh, uh, information to the user, the system functioning properly from the outside. If you see that function system is working properly, but that the system is functioning with a faulty environment that may get damaged after some few times or few hours or few days of continuous working. So meanwhile, we need to identify to protect the system. Whenever there is any one of these parties happen, I immediately stop and replace the switch and make that armature is get protected. The voltage what I, it is supplied to the particular application. That application I need to protect. For that, I need to identify that before that application is get damaged. So five, five different categories of signals. Okay, so these five different categories of signals, I consider as a five different pair of signals okay because here the signal as it is not considered so i felt that uh, differentiating the signal in terms of uh, uh, values is tougher because we may have some based on the sample rate if i if i sample the signal with uh, 20 kilo eights, then we may have 20000 samples 20000 samples means i need 20000 neurons in the input layer for each data to be processed that as many number of samples available, that many number of neurons I need. So it is tougher to implement when we have that many number of count of uh, data in the input pass. So what we are doing is uh, we are taking the uh, fast Fourier transform of it so that the spectrum of these signals I am identifying, the spectrum shows little more difference compared to the real signal. Just by seeing the signal, I may not may be able to identify the difference between these five signals. Instead, when I calculate the spectrum of the signal, and if, the, if I see the spectrum of the signal, I understood that, yes, it is a little more easier for me to classify. Okay, this is the shape I am getting in the spectrum. So, okay, this is the normal condition. When I am getting this shape, I am getting, say, this is the poly plus condition. One thing, the difference between the signals, which is lesser in this case, which is better in this case when I go for spectral representation. Another most important thing is when I go for spectral analysis, uh, the number of data is getting lesser. Only I need to go with the 40 samples, 40 values. So 40 neurons is enough for me. So as I said that uh, this is the most important thing we are uh, uh, talking much about the uh, future extraction. When when we are when you are recently talking in different uh, sessions, I observed that. We are calculating the mean square error, or we are calculating the standard deviation of all the signals, or we are calculating some other parameter. You, uh, so when I take an image, how to differentiate? We are calculating saturation of this image, U of this image. We calculate that. So what is the parameter? Much clearly highlighting the difference between these categories of signals, these categories of images. That parameter you should select. So based on these, uh, I understood and I am comfortable with, yes, when I, when I calculate the spectrum of normal, spectrum of uh, each signal, and I see that the spectrum itself shows the much difference between these five signals. So this is more than sufficient for me to get the training the needle. So I, if, if a 40 values are there, you see that here in case of first signal, first value is uh, 1, maybe second value 20, third value is uh, uh, 2. 2, 2, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1. So if you see, this is the possible combination. When you, when you go for second value, first value itself, we have 5. So there is a difference. When there is a difference in these values, 40 values are there. Each signal have 40 values. If I compare these 40 values of each signal and I identify there is a enough amount of differences available in these 40 values, then it is easy for training your network. If these values are more similar, then even though you put an excellent architecture and you put an excellent algorithm to update your weight, the network never get trained. It's keep on continually update always the train because weight won't get the constant value which combine which differentiate the signal. So as a human, how you observe that? Yes, this is the five signals. Here I observe that there is a huge differences among all these five different signals. And here I can't able to do differentiation. Then I can select this parameter as a differencing feature of these particular signals, which is easy for me to identify. Yes, these are the parameters which the neural network easily differentiate. 
okay whenever this comes first signal comes it identify neural it's a normal condition if first and second both are similar then neural network will get a untrained uh, by misleading misjudged justification what happened when it misjudged that second signal also as a normal so we need to give the input to the neural network such as that uh, that uh, features what we are feeding to the neural network we have a little uh, amount of difference among it if the difference is very very minimal then network training is get very very tough we need a, a larger set of uh, 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 architecture of neurons or we need a better much 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 powerful algorithms for getting trained so as much as possible while, while extracting the futures we must be very very careful which future will differentiate these signals better way that future only you should select if you select that futures and if you give that as a input to the neurons then i believe that uh, the network will be trained in a easier way in a within short and span span of time and performs very well also okay so if the difference you are not considering and uh, the amount of difference is very very minimal then the network is get confused and it may leads to misjudge the uh, classifications okay this is what that uh, the futures we are extracted now 40 neurons will be there in my input layer 40 neurons in the hidden layer and uh, uh, five neurons in the output layer so why five neurons in the output layer means uh, five results i need five grouping i am going to do whenever i receive the normal condition first output neuron will be active so you see here uh, so uh, this is the network so five five neurons i will be uh, i am having in the if this is just a, a single neuron single output i put it here but this is the combination of that so five neurons will be there in the output layer so this is a normal condition called a plus called a minus called b plus called b minus so out 40 inputs will be given so 40 inputs means uh, this 40 data 40 values what is extracted from the fft of those signals so 40 values i will give for these 40 values what i am giving is a first combination of 40 value received means a neuron 1 will be 1 so my combination my output will be 1 for 1 0 0 0 for a normal condition so when output neuron when i give the second input then second output neuron will be active so i'll get 0 1 0 0 0 is the output value when fault third is given as a input then i i make that training is 0 0 1 0 0 should be the output uh, for that only i am training and the even implementation testing also same thing happens and uh, when fourth input is given i train the network for 0 0 0 1 0 for fifth input is given then i train the network for 0 0 0 0 1 so now you see that uh, based on the uh, classification when normal means uh, i'll get the output as 1 0 0 0 so whenever uh, the output of this network shows that first neuron activated all other four neurons are inactive 1 0 0 0 0 then i observe that all the switching is switching is under normal condition uh, sometimes when i uh, observe the second neuron is get activated 0 1 0 0 0 then uh, then it is uh, uh, clearly uh, clearly indicating that Uh, there is a fault a plus is happened that is the switch a plus is get damaged you replace it so whenever i am getting 0 0 1 then fault b sb plus is happening that is the switch sb plus is get damaged that is the way we should train and we, we can test it so whenever the va signal is always given to the network and every time i used to observe that output what is the output when i am getting 1 0 0 0 no problem it is under normal condition keep going so whenever any of these input other than the first neuron is get activated we connect to the alarm or we connect to some indication such that it indicates that particular fault happened so particular switch is get damaged so we can replace and we can save the uh, application for it okay so this is one simple application where you can understand what exactly happened so the here the important thing is the so first of all neural network where we apply is where we are mathematically and describe the process mathematically i am unable to describe the difference between these uh, faulty signals so there i can apply and the most important thing is uh, first of all you should decide what is the number of uh, neurons we require and what is the particular parameter if signal itself huge difference is there 
then you directly go and you are satisfied with number of neurons also less than okay well and good you go with this uh, as it is without any future extraction as it is the signal will be given as input you would train the network but when you found the signal difference is not able to identify i need to analyze i need to find particular fault particular parameter of these signals are difference that only indicates that particular faulty uh, uh, environment so that particular parameter you need to extract that is what the future extraction is so future extraction plays a very very important role so it is not that all the time same futures we need to extract for all the type of problems all the type of image classification or signal classification or speech recognition okay these are the standard difference or uh, future parameters we need to consider no it differs based on the environment it differs based on the type of signal so which particular parameter which particular feature of that signals differentiate the all possible combination in a greater way that particular feature you select that only gives you the better uh, classification better uh, updation of weight in a easier way and more accurate uh, weight function updations once the training is done properly then testing is also will be a more uh, right way okay so when training is not properly done training is failed means the only one thing when futures are not properly selected here i took that uh, spectral of these signals the ft portion of these signals is considered so i am satisfied with number of values the party okay and also i identified there is a huge difference between these five signals which is sufficient for me to differentiate them by human itself visually we are understanding there is a difference so neural network is easily identified okay that is what we need to understand about the neural network and uh, this is that uh, different fault uh, what is uh, absolute okay. and the important consideration while selecting the neural network one is the size of input data set size of our target or output set data set the selection of number of layers is also plays very important role then weight updation algorithms which algorithm you need to consider that is absolutely based on the type of parameter considered which gives you the more differentiation among the pair of data set. that parameter only should be selected that is please keep it in mind that don't always uh, go blindly with some predefined parameter you find if you have a set of 1000 data which particular parameter differentiate this 1000 data just identify that parameter that parameter you use it for some future extracted value and that you feed as input to the neural network and train the network then it is easy and we can easily differentiate the network with a simple system And the type of output needed also we need to think about it. whether we are grouping it or we are going to identify the signal as it is we are reproducing the signal or one signal will reproduce another signal that also possible that also possible so that that we can need to these are the things we need to consider while picking up the uh, new data any queries please thanks to dr m saravanan sir uh, participants will have any questions can one or two participants can ask questions the feedback link is uh, posted in the zoom chat box please fill it carefully for certification i think there is no questions rising from participants okay sir any questions any questions please any questions sir please so sir has explained very well about the classification and deduction using uh, neural networks so uh, any more uh, hints you need to give sir anything so thanks for what are the job applications sir on this job applications anything yeah sir 
situation uh, whenever you go for any uh, any sort of artificial intelligence the basic you start it from this uh, neural network only so when 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 we are uh, uh, going for uh, most of the real time applications are uh, uh, random not like even when we are when we see uh, when subjects are trained uh, almost when initially they will used to say that for linear applications for uh, time invariant application for uh, uh the deterministic application only the concepts whatever we are studying is applicable but these uh, neural network calls for the logic all these things are uh, applicable for non linear systems random applications that we can't mathematically describe it that we need a human how human interface is essential for the decision making there and all i want to replace any system then the neural network based systems only can possible